Hey, I'm Alex Rome, and today we're making a future base baseline. And another thing that we're doing today is I'm going to throw some shout outs out in this area of my screen to uh, for some people who've submitted to the EDM competition. So I just went through the submissions, gathered some names, and I'm going to give you guys some shout outs up here um, because you're all amazing and all of your competition submissions have equally blown me away you guys have done some crazy shit i couldn't even think of could not even like imagine like you guys took these uh those chords i gave you for the edm competition you guys took them in directions that i would not even expect like some guys over here putting vocals on them some guys over here putting you know uh putting those chords in in genres like trap like festival trap and hip-hop and r&b over here and you know uh house over here it's just like crazy you guys are insane man <laughs> it's like insane like i thought it was, it was gonna be like like primarily future bass oriented but no hell no nah you guys just had your own plans, uh, but today we're gonna make a cool e uh, future bass baseline. It's really big. It's huge. It's like the biggest, thickest baseline. Uh, I'm gonna play it really quick. So really simple loop here, nothing to it, but the idea was this bass line. Uh, it's, a, it's about as heavy as any 808, but it's got this grittiness. On top of it, and it's uh, just really thick, takes up a lot of spectrum in the EQ, uh, so it's more than big enough for a bass line. It's got its sub frequencies and it's got its high harmonic frequencies. Uh, let's take a look at these sub frequencies in the EQ. So these sub frequencies are from 40, in between 40 and 100, which I say is the best range for your sub bass to sit. So Let's get to making this bass line. I'm gonna open up a new thing of serum here. By the way, I made a new Instagram. Go follow it at Alexrome Sound. Okay, let's open up serum. Let's make it with serum. And let's get our, let's actually take the notes from up here. And this bass line has two layers. And looks like this. Whoops. And so let's click here. And what we're going to do is we're going to turn off both both oscillators. And the only oscillator we're going to use is this sub oscillator. And I'm going to use the square wave. Now the reason I use square wave for sub bass sometimes is because it's thicker than a sine wave in my opinion. Now, not saying there's anything wrong with the sine wave, I use sine waves equally as much, um, but what the square gives you is the higher harmonic frequencies that I go for when I'm trying to create a bass line that you can hear on any speaker. Now, um, when I say any speaker, I mean a speaker without a subwoofer. Like, shitty speakers can hear this, you know? The, the general population who listens to music doesn't have $700 worth of studio monitors in front of them. Therefore, they can't hear perfect bass. You know, they might not have subwoofers in their cars. They might not have car speakers that even give off that much bass. Um, you know, a, a big number of them might be listening to music in those little iPod earbuds are out of the speaker in their computers, which is, uh, you know, a lower quality speaker. Um, so what we need to do as producers is give them a baseline that they can hear without sub frequencies. So yes, this baseline has a sub frequency range, but it also is going to have a high harmonic frequency range 
that everybody can hear. Uh, so we're going to get working on that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on this filter and route it to this sub oscillator. So you see this S here that stands for, stands for sub and then this N here stands for noise. Pretty dope, huh? It's like really easy. It's like kind of like a uh, I actually I can't really uh, even compare that to anything. I don't know why I went that route. <laughs> so let me uh, let me play this really quick. I'm gonna filter it up to 140 hertz. Sounds pretty tight. Let's come here and look at the EQ and see where our sub frequencies rest. right where we want it in between 40 and 100 hertz that's the best sub range strongest sub range I would actually say between 40 and like 90 hertz if you get up to the hundreds like if you're at 100 hertz it's gonna be a high frequency sub it's still gonna be sub range but it's gonna be a high frequency sub so let's duplicate this layer here and what I'm gonna do with this one is give us a nice low cut because we already have a sub layer we don't need a second one I'm gonna low cut up to 140 Hertz and brick wall this EQ as such and then we're gonna play it and we're gonna hear a hum but it's not gonna be sub heavy so what I'm gonna do with this one so I'm gonna give us a little bit of grittiness I heard this style baseline in a flume track actually. It was one of those flume tracks that he didn't really promote that much. Um, so it was tough for me to find. It was on his YouTube channel. Has a lot of views, but I'd never heard it before. Never seen it anywhere. Never seen it pushed anywhere. I'm going to put some downsampling on this. That's going to be a really fat bass line. So if we go at our kick and snare. We don't need that little space. So something cool you could actually do with this bass line is shorten up the decay let's put it at 1.82 seconds and kind of make a gritty 808 throwing a vocal chop lead here and maybe we can test this baseline out with some chords here that I made and I'm gonna low cut these chords see if they work with this baseline Okay, so it works pretty nice with chords. Let's throw these other weird leads I have. Baseline sounds really, really cool, man. I hope you guys were able to take something from this tutorial. Follow my Instagram at alexromesound and go check out all of the Alex Rome competition submissions. The deadline is tomorrow at midnight. If tomorrow is the 23rd. Yep, tomorrow is the 23rd, and that is the deadline at midnight. Get your competition submissions in. Blow me away. 
Whoever blows me away the most wins this competition. I have no idea who's going to win yet. I've listened to a ton of them. I love them all. Picking a winner is going to be the hardest thing in the world. So get your competition submissions in. And stay tuned for some more awesome stuff. Peace out.